there is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. It's been the ruin of me. Hi guys, I'm John from John's Pantry. Welcome to the vlog. Today we're making macaroni cheese, cauliflower cheese together. Beautiful. Please watch. Alright guys, here's the beginning of the cauliflower cheese recipe. Using one pan, only one pan to wash up at the end. Use a metal handle pan like that then it can go in the oven and what you want is a tablespoon of salt to start with now I'm bringing that to the boil I'm going to cut the cauliflower up in a second water always boils faster when you put the lid on right we're going to prep up the cauliflower now I've cut up the cauliflower. Now you want it just so they're just slightly bigger than a bite size. Some of them are small, some of them are big, doesn't really matter. I've got the pan of boiling water boiling away and also I've got a large bowl of very cold water. In fact you could put ice in it. This is for to cool the cauliflower down. But what we'll do is We'll get the cauliflower in. Now this literally only wants to boil for I would say the size of this cauliflower two minutes at the very most. We're slightly taking them over this the blanched stage. Because just remember this is going to go in the oven in a cheese sauce for a good half an hour. 40 minutes so that will finish off the cooking what we're doing now is just starting the cooking process but we're going to cool it straight down we're not going to get rid of this hot water what we're going to do is use the hot water again for the pasta and then we'll do the same again we'll cook that pasta quite al dente because that's going to finish off cooking in the oven in the cheese sauce so this is just coming back to the boil once it's come back to the boil we'll come back to it and we'll uh, cool it down in the cold water right that's been bubbling away for a good two minutes now I've just tested it oh we're steaming up and all I'm going to do is just take it out the boiling water and we're going to put it into the cold water this is what you call refreshing so all we're doing, we're just stopping the cooking process, dead easy. Nothing technical about it. But now we've, we've got this cauliflower flavoured water. It's still got the salt in there. The, nothing's been taken out. So what we can do, we can leave that boiling away and we can put the pasta in. So I'm going to get the pasta and we'll put the pasta in. You want about the same amount of pasta as you've got cauliflower. Right, in goes the pasta. Now depending on uh, how many you're cooking for, just vary how much pasta you need. But I'm only cooking for two, so I've got a whole cauliflower there. So, whew, that's going to definitely feed us. I've got um, the equivalent size in mass, not weight, in mass of pasta. And then I'm going to boil this. Um, normally pasta is anywhere between 10 and 12 minutes, but I'm going to boil this for 8 minutes. So it's still going to have that slight bite to it. Uh, and I'll do exactly the same as what I did with the cauliflower. I'll take it out the pan and put it straight into cold water. That will stop the cooking process. And we'll drain it off. And then we'll go ahead and make the cheese sauce in the same pan. That this is going to go in the oven later on. Cheers. Right, that pasta's boiled. I'm just going to turn that water down a bit now. Just to clear the foam really. Now I've got another fresh bowl of very cold water. 
I keep steaming up because I can't put the extractor fan on because it kills the video. So I'm just going to take this out, put it straight into this cold water again. And this is just blanching it, just cold, cooling it all down. Ready. So once I've made the sauce, I can put the pasta and the cauliflower back into it. And then it can sit all day. It can sit in the fridge till the next day. And then it can go in the oven whenever you want it. Give it at least, I would say 30 minutes, but I'd rather say 45. Um, now this water, I know you're going to say, wow, what a cheapskate. But I'm not joking, this water is full of flavour. It's pasta water. It's had cauliflower cooking it. It's seasoned with salt. You could actually chuck a load of chuck a load of veg in there. Some pulses, red lentils, some mung beans. Boil it down for twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. Hey, you've got a soup. <laughs> Why get rid of flavour? But there's only me and Tracy, so sadly, I can't do that. But at the moment, you can see I've cooled that pasta down now. And it is quite al dente, but that's what we want. Like I say, it's going back in the oven. It's going to get recooked. So I'll get rid of this uh, water. Keep the pan though. No need to wash the pan out. I'll get rid of the water and we'll start making the sauce. Alright, I've emptied the water. There's a bit of film on there, but I've turned it down to five. Just at the moment, we want to just melt the butter. We don't want to be frying anything, we're just melting. I've got two and a half tablespoons of butter in here. I know it seems a lot, but if you're left over with some cheese sauce, that's fine. Do yourself a cheese souffle. Whip some egg whites into it. Put it in the oven, lovely. Um, so for the cheese sauce, what I've got is um, some mustard. I prefer English mustard, but sadly you use what you've got. Um, salt obviously, pepper, some red Leicester, any cheese that you've got in the fridge. I'm still trying to use up cheese that we got off a cheese board. Some mozzarella. Not necessary, but it does give it a nice tricky texture. And I've got some dried bay leaves. Now, all I'm doing here is I am just melting the butter. You'll hear it sizzle, but that's fine. Right, that's the butter melted. Turn the temperature up just a little bit more, up to about seven. My my stove goes up to nine, so um, I'm about two thirds. Only maximum temp on the on the stove. What we're looking for is I'm using bread flour, but any plain flour. I'm using bread flour because that's what I have in stock because I do a lot of bread. And so you've got two and a half tablespoons of butter. You want the same again of flour though. You see, it's not frothing or anything. So, this is one tablespoon, two tablespoons, and a half. to fry this, not fry it, but you just want to cook it slowly. Now at this stage all it is is butter and flour. So we're going to add a good pinch of pepper, good pinch of salt,
split a bay leaf in half. And there we go. I'll just mix all that together. There we go. Heating it up like everybody else says, as long as you bring it back to the boil every time you add some, you'll end up with a lovely consistency. Now, have you noticed that's starting to thicken up? And that's just cold milk, so all this rubbish, oh, use boiling milk and hot milk and hot liquid. It doesn't matter, as long as you, you bring it back to the boil. see that's come it's coming back so now that's what that's the basics of a roux sauce so we just keep adding just keep adding the milk slowly but surely until you get the consistency you want now I put two halves of bay leaves don't put a full bay leaf in always break them in half when you're making a sauce because you'll find up you'll end up with milk all over your stove because you whip that leaf around the pan so that's come back up to temperature I'll add some more and we just keep doing this like I say until we're happy that we've got a cheese sauce consistency just bear in mind when you add the cheese that will thicken it again so always err on the side of caution, always go that slightly bit less thick or make it slightly thinner. Right, let me just keep doing this. So I'll come back to you once we've got the sauce made into the right consistency. Okay, I've got most of the milk in. I've got one last lot to put in. But that's thinned down lovely. There's not a lump in sight and all I've used is a wooden spoon. Don't need a whisk. Just remember, bring it back to the boil so it's bubbling every time you add your milk. Right, this is the last lot, lot of milk. I'm just mix this in, make sure it comes back to the boil. Always remember, keep stirring. Keep stirring, you get a silky smooth, silky smooth sauce. Now that's a basic white sauce, you could use that. For anything else, you don't have to make cheese sauce with that. You could do a parsley sauce, nice dill sauce. Put a bit of wine in with it if you want. Uh, doing this, if I was doing just a basic cauliflower cheese, I would have maybe substituted some of the milk with a bit of cider and use a very good strong cheddar in the sauce. You can't beat it. Right, there we go. Sorry we're at strange angles, but my camera woman never turned up today. Right, now that, as you can see, is quite a thin sauce, and that's what you want, because remember, you're putting cheese in, and that will thicken it up. I'll turn it down to five again. I'll taste it for seasoning. You know, I would put a bit more salt in that. Now 
Right, now, this is a flour-based sauce. So you will always get that. It's like a floury, doughy taste to the sauce. So you need to make sure it boils or simmers at least for a good minute, two minutes. That also extracts the, the flavour from your bay leaf. Now at this stage, I'm going to put a teaspoon of the mustard in. There you go, a teaspoon of French mustard. Now you'll notice that it will change colour. There we go. Now if you get got any spare egg yolk lying around in your fridge, as soon as you take this off temperature, off the heat, put your egg yolks in. And that will make it even richer for you. But there we go. Now it's just literally, I know it's simmered for a good minute. I'll taste it again. Oh yes, I've got that hint of mustard now. You don't really want the flavour of mustard, but mustard with cheese brings the flavour out. Right, in goes the cheese. Turn the heat off. Notice I never grated the cheese. There's no need when you're doing the sauce. The cheese will melt. I just chopped it up into little blocks. That's because I hate grating. I end up grating more of my fingers than I do with the cheese. Right, notice. Can you see how thick it's getting now? It's getting a lot thicker. Just with the addition of the cheese. So always bear that in mind. I always turn the heat off. When you, as soon as you add the cheese, turn the heat off. Because that's when you're going to burn the bottom of the pan. And always keep stirring it. That'll melt the cheese into it. And I've got a cat in the background, obviously heard me say cheese. Because they love cheese. I'm not allowed it though. Right, that. It's like heaven in a pan. Right, so there's the sauce. That's the sauce done. Notice how much thicker that is. It's like wallpaper paste now. But that's how we want it. I've strained off from the cold water the cauliflower and the pasta. Both quite al dente. I've drained them off for a good 10 minutes because I want them dry. I don't want them to dilute the flavour of the cheese sauce or the consistency of the cheese sauce right bear in mind this is the same pan we started cooking the cauliflower in in we go and we'll just give this a good mix around it all mixed together in the original pan we started with I'll put some uh, breadcrumbs over the top so they'll go nice and brown and crispy that needs to go in the oven like I say 30 minutes it's only with the two of us <laughs> we may be having seconds for supper but crack on put your hands to it it's great right the temperature for your oven you need to be at 180 degrees C uh, if you're looking at Fahrenheit, I know nothing. So, 180 degrees C, and I'm only doing for two portions, but there was probably four portions in that that serving. 
so you're looking at uh, 30 minutes to 40 minutes um, mine's in the oven now hopefully at the end of this video you'll get a photo of it before we eat it thank you very much cheers thank you guys for watching hopefully it was a help if not let me know let me know what I've done wrong this is my first video <laughs> so obviously I didn't have my camera woman uh, hopefully the next one oh, we're gonna look so professional just be there be square cheers dudes Oh, oh.